Okay, welcome to the ninth session of the class on understanding the true foot of the horse. Alrighty, if you can, can understand the similarity between this and this and this and this, okay, and you know how to do this. Uh, and you recognize shape and form and then a circle. Oh, see? Then you can understand the true foot of the horse and you can also learn how to correctly either trim your own horse or work with your farrier to trim your horse to restore that horse's true foot form. Okay, now remember that this is the internal foot. Now this one is a little dried up, so so you know that the lateral cartilage and the heels and the bulbs right here are dried up and shriveled and that they move their cartilage like your nose. Okay, but this shape remains constant. But because of leverage and, and forces and lack of trimming and or wrong trimming or various matters, um, this becomes totally a different shape what you call hoof distortion, which eventually causes internal problems on the foot and causes lameness. So ideally what we want is we want a hoof capsule that fits and forms perfectly to the internal foot right here. So in this session what we're going to talk, we're going to talk about hoof distortion. Let me get over here. Okay, need to quit watching myself on this recorder and just do what I'm going to do here. Okay, so, see, remember, that would be like the internal foot and this would be like the capsule. It has to form fit. There's a certain way it fits. There's only one way it fits correctly. Okay, to every foot. And every horse's foot, the anatomy of the foot, is uh, darn near identical. Okay, it's the hoof capsule that gets distorted into many, many different forms and shapes. Okay, so the better we know this, the more we analyze the structure of this and the makeup of this wall, the better we're going to be able to see um, what's going on with that hoof capsule, where it needs to be trimmed, what needs to be corrected, what isn't right. See, we get to know the genuine, and then we'll know when this thing is presenting a counterfeit appearance and is not correctly fitted to this. Okay. All right. Well, I come up with an idea, and I've been working on it, and it has really helped me discover how this capsule gets distorted and how we don't see it. You see, this thing can be very, very, very deceiving. All right, so I've made up a couple of hooves. Okay, now this is the copy of a cadaver foot I had. There we go. That uh, I did a plaster cast of. And this, of course, you've seen me use this foot before. It's just a dried up cadaver hoof right here. And so I have made, I made, I've been making clay hooves, hoof capsules, and I've been seeing what happens when you leave different parts of the hoof capsule here long and how it distorts and how it gets, creates medial lateral, lateral imbalances. Now medial means the inside and lateral means the outside. And this has really opened my eyes. And uh, yesterday, 
uh, I finally figured out the imbalance in my horse and was able to trim a very high pillar that I did not even know was there. Okay. And so this is very deceptive, and it's what causes medial lateral imbalance. So as you see, I have made a hoof. Let's see. There we go. This is what, well, this really isn't what this horse's foot should look like. It is, but it isn't. Because I have built in a severe imbalance into this foot. Yes. So we're going to find it here. Okay, I'm going to remove the, the hoof capsule. Now, that I made. Okay, now here, all right, this, I just followed the shape of the hoof capsule that was already on it. And I found out where the imbalance was. And I also learned something new about uh, hoof distortion. And see, it's all according to our interpretation. We read the hoof and we interpret certain things. Certain things are interpreted because they're so common. They're such a common hoof distortion. They're interpreted as part of the anatomy. One of those things is that the horse's foot has an arch right here in the wall. But what I have found out is that, well, on the internal foot, look, proof. Let's see. Let's back it up a little. There's the foot. Do you see an arch there? Anywhere? No. Okay. So there is not an arch right here, but it's so common in the hoof capsule because... The heel gets run forward. When the heel gets run forward, the wall buckles outward here. And so it can look like a flare. You can think you're getting a flare here, but actually it's just the buckling of the wall, and there's no way that you're going to rasp down that flare. What you've got to do is figure out what's wrong and get the heels to stand back up, and that will pull the wall back in. Um, another thing that often makes the hoof look like it has an arch here that's not really truly in the anatomy is if it gets a high pillar. And that is what I learned from uh, this foot here, which we'll look at it here in a minute. But for now, what I want to do, if I can find my knife, oh, here it is, is I'm going to take apart the imbalance that I built into the hoof capsule so you can see it, so you can see how it develops. Okay, now, where the imbalance is, is in this pillar right here. Now, when you look down, you sight down the foot because the foot will find a kind of fall one way or the other, and because it's creating an imbalance to the internal foot, um, you can look down this foot, you can sight down it, and when it's a certain way, it will actually make it look like it's high over here, when the truth is, it's a high pillar here. And uh, something that happens when, uh, before I take this apart, something that happens here is when you get a high pillar on one side, okay, it's going to throw the weight of the horse let me see if I can do this. Over to the side. Do you see that? How it threw it over here? When the horse walks, his foot is naturally going to go that direction. And it's also going to make him look slightly pigeon-toed sometimes. Well, all the time if it's a high pillar. So you want to pay attention to where your horse is wearing his foot here. If it's a high pillar on this side, He's going to wear his toe over here. If it's a high pillar here, he's going to wear his toe over here. Now, just doesn't that make sense? Because if we're high here, it naturally throws our weight in that direction. See? All right. And 
you'll also throw weight back to this heel back here. And what you're going to find out happening is this heel is going to be running forward. Um, this heel is going to be more upright on the side where the imbalance is. So, okay, so I'm going to take this apart and show you what I did underneath here. We're going to take out the frog. Oh, man, that really stuck that thing in there. All right. So there's your frog and your periopal right here. Now we can see into the foot, the sole, the bars. I'm going to go ahead and just take the bars off for now because what we're wanting to look at, okay, what we're wanting to look at is the thickness of the sole here. Now, see, you have this foot, and you should have a uniform thickness of sole around the perimeter of this foot here. If you don't, it causes an imbalance. Okay. So, let's see here. Let's take out the sole. Now, if I can get it. Find something to take it out with. Try not to impale myself. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to peel out the sole. Okay, here. Let's look at that again real quick. There we go. See if I can get you to look at that. See, but you don't, you, that frog is in the way when you're sighting down that foot. Remember that. Okay? Okay, so we're going to peel out the sole. Okay, now we're going to look at the wall under here. Hopefully you can see it. Yeah. Let's see. There you go. Do you see the imbalance in the pillar right here? Where is it? Oh, right here. See that? See how much higher the wall is right here? See, when we tram, this can get high on one side or the other or on both sides. And this cre this is what creates an imbalance. Now, now look at... This part of the, this is the internal foot right here, okay? So look at, when you look at an x-ray, and there's a high pillar, and this will not show on x-rays. Let's see if I can find something here. Look at the internal foot. See how it's lopsided? There. See, when they're looking at an x-ray, all they see is that foot is lopsided and made the medial lateral imbalance internally. Yes, there's one in the capsule, but what happens is, and what I did not do to this foot, okay? Um, see, when I when I'm okay, when I made this foot, I followed the coronary band here. All right, so see how I have a nice smooth, even coronary band, kind of on both sides. This one's a tad high, but, well, what happens when you have a high side is that some of that will jam upwards as well so that you don't, it'll jam, your, you'll see this a lot. You'll have a high uh, hairline over here and a lower hairline over here. And so when you look down the foot, when you sight down the foot, down this way, it seems to have leveled out. You can't really see it, but this is what's going on on the inside. You have a high pillar, and that creates, well, okay, there you go. See how that foot is sitting crooked? And what you'll notice, too, is that one of your bulbs will be higher than the other. Yeah. See, high over here. Let's see. 
Let me look. Okay, so I'm high here, and that makes this bulb on the opposite, catty corner, you know, if I'm high here, okay, this bulb over here is going to be lower. Anyway, so with clay, we can make hooves, and we can start to understand kind of where we're getting our imbalances and what's keeping our foot from coming back together. Come on, get out. Okay, come on. No. Don't want that in there. See how I made that flare out there just a bit? Because this is exactly what was going on with my horse. And a lot of times you'll have you'll find that the foot will be asymmetrical. One side will be wider. Okay, let's get this stuff out of here. I wanted to fill in that gap so the foot wouldn't, oh, there, there it's coming out. All right, so I'm going to squeeze this back in. Now this horse, it eventually, if your feet are like this long enough, it'll also lead to the slight um, remodeling of the coffin bone, which this horse actually had. Okay, so now, let's see, how did I do that before? Okay, do you see that imbalance? The wall is higher. Where? Oh, over here than it is over there. Do you see it? Okay, now one problem we have and why we don't see it, and I had this on Valor and I, I just could never figure it out, is that you might see it, but because you bevel... Because you bevel the wall here, you're rounding out the wall. And so I always noticed in pictures that uh, I had more, I seem to have more of a bevel over here than I ever did over here. And that's because I'm beveling it from the top and I'm making it look round. And so to make it look round, I had to take more off the high side over here. So uh, I did the same thing with this. I, I, you know, took the clay and I made a high pillar over here and I blended it all in. And then I took and I took my knife here and I made me a kind of a Mustang roll. And sure enough, it looked just like the pictures on my horse where I would have, where is it? See, I keep forgetting which side it's on. Okay, this is the high side. I would have a thicker bevel over here, and it seemed real thick in the toe right here. And I would have a thinner bevel over here. Do you see how that's going on right there? How the bevel is thicker? Yeah, okay, over here. <laughs> see why it's... Hey, I'm even getting confused on a clay hoof, and I know what I did. So you can see why it's so confusing... On a, on a real hoof, you know, and uh, it'll kind of uh, make the hoof look a little corkscrewed, like, like the horn tubules are a little corkscrewed sometimes, but a lot of time, and it will slightly tweak the whole hoof capsule, because of course, you have a high spot over here that is pull, pull, putting pressure right there. And again, what's it do? It throws it over onto this side here when the horse walks. And the horse will look really crooked as well a lot of times. But a lot of times, it, he'll just look slightly crooked or just, you know, you get so used to it, you don't even notice it. You think that's the way the horse is. Okay, so we're going to look in here. And when I made this hoof originally, okay, I made the wall the same all the way around, okay, which was, got my handy dandy ruler, about one centimeter. Let's see if I can show you that. Okay, about one centimeter. You see that all the way around? 
And, okay, let's look over here and see what it is. Let's see. Oh, my, two centimeters. See, so I created quite an imbalance of that capsule, but would you really have known that when you first looked at it? Nope. Yep. Can't really tell, especially when that horse is standing. All right. So, now, if I want to, now when I... How did I straighten this out, and how did I know how much to take down? That is a good question, and that I'll kind of show you in some videos. You know, um, one of the ways was on the foot itself. I measure down the center of the foot, and I mark the toe. So I know where the center of the toe is here, for sure. See? And then... Oh, and I made clear over here on the heel high, too, because, see, again, this horse actually had this kind of an imbalance going on. Okay, so what I did here fit perfectly with this foot. Um, okay, where was I going with that? All right, All right so we're going to mark this at one centimeter. And take it back down. Oh, I okay, I was going to show you this. Okay, so I draw a line down the center. And then I find the center of the toe right here. And this is the center of the leg right here. And I want to, then I draw a line from there. We're going to make a little line here down the center of the foot. Do you see that? Then I go over at least, well, you know, I'm still working on some of this, on exactly how far to go over and how to mark this to, to figure this out. But what I started doing was I knew that the foot... Wait a minute. I knew from looking at the internal foot, right, that the foot does not go around like that, that from the inside that it reduces in length from here to here as it goes around the pillars, both in the front feet and in the back feet. So what I tried to do was figure out what a good measurement from here to here plus sole would be, and then draw a line down the center of my toe, and then come over here a certain amount, a certain distance, and make that line like up to one-fourth inch shorter. That's how I started shorting my pillars. And so I'm still working on a system that is going to be perfected, but um, doing that along with looking at the sole, and reading the soul has been helping me shorten the pillars on my horse, and he has really been responding favorably. Um, to get them, again, we, what do we want? We want uniform sole thickness. Now, this is not uniform. Okay? Just a minute. Okay. Let's take some clay here. And let's just make a nice uniform sole thick ridge round about this, okay? So they say that the sole should be as thick as the horse's wall. My clay is a little hard. Okay, so.
Probably not perfect, but you're getting the general idea here. See? Uniform sole thickness. All right, well, here you go. I uh, misplaced this. Now, you would think that if you put it on the foot, if the foot was unlevel, that it's going to show you down the dorsal wall, right? This is a hoof gauge. Tells you what the angle of your dorsal wall is from here to here. Okay, so you would think if you put that thing on the foot, let's turn around, on the foot, that it's going to show you if your foot is not level. Uh, you would think, because you would think this part would run right down the center and, and it, it would be skewered. You know, if your foot was level, was higher on one side, well, you would think that. Ha! <laughs> but it's not the case. Okay, so we're just going to put this thing on here. Got it there. See, got it on there. Okay, now, oh, wait a minute. There we go. See there? Looks like it's right down the center of the toe, doesn't it? And we turn it over. There you have it. Right now, I'm reading at uh, about 50 degrees here. Yep. 50 degree. 50. So this horse, just as his little clay hoof capsule stands here, he has a dorsal hoof wall 50 degrees. Could be 52 or slightly higher. Um, but here's the thing. Again, what is going on on the inside of here? Got this big high, where is it? Big high pillar right in here and it's even high in the heel over here so how is it that that can be I don't know but you see how deceptive this can be okay and a farrier say oh they know it no they don't you know they don't know it this is going on in horses all over the place and nobody knows it but us now okay so I'm trying to come up with a way to where, since I know the shape of the internal foot, okay, I can do some sort of measurement of the dorsal wall. You know, measure down the center, come over a certain degree to the pillar, measure again, draw a line, and make a mark at the bottom on both sides, and then draw a line from the center over here, so that then, and I'll read the soul with it, it's not like you rasp down indiscriminately, you know, here's your rasp, then you're going to want to take that off from there to there, however much, you know, but this measurement just helps me as far as the internal anatomy to be able to make a measurement here, and then a measurement here or here, and then just draw a line, and I don't necessarily uh, take down the foot to that line, but that, along with reading the natural grid of the hoof, have I been aiming towards the camera here? Reading the natural grid of the hoof, look at these lines here. These lines will tell you a whole bunch. What's this line telling you about? about this pillar right here, huh, that it was high. In fact, that both pillars were high. That's why it's sunk more in the middle here and high over here because both pillars were high. We're going to see this on this other foot. Okay, so we have a natural grid in the hoof that we can read. The horizontal uh, intertubular horn lines called growth rings and the vertic or yeah, Horizon, vertical, oh, vertical horn tubules. There we go. Okay. So I have been trying to come up with a system to where I can 
measure this, come a certain ways over, find the pillar, measure it, you know, to try and get the right length for when I'm rasping, and then, say, draw a circle, well, a line like I've drawn here, so that I know what to take off. Now, I'm not going to do it perfect in this deal here, you know. Now, I haven't come up with the perfect system yet on that, but I'm working on it, you know. And as I said, a lot of it is also reading what's going into the soul. You can't just indiscriminately rasp into the soul here, especially if you've got flared out walls and different things like that. I mean... You can't just indiscriminately do that. You have to map the foot and know where this internal foot is and know how close it is you are with that rasp and everything like that. So you have to be able to read the soul, too. Anyway, so I'll make some lines. Let's pretend this. What did I do here? On this one, okay, I measured his foot at three inches. I come over here. And I made it two and three quarters. So I try and lessen it by at least a fourth of an inch as I'm coming around that pillar. See? And then I'll come over with my rasp. And first of all, what I'm not showing you, okay, is you're going to have have lines that come up like this as well. That's, that doesn't look too good. But it'll be up like this. See? And so you're going to want to read those lines as well. So if I'm here high from, say, back here to here, there's going to be some lines that just aren't, are kind of doing that. That looks pretty messy there, don't it? Well, they don't actually do that. I'm trying to look at this thing and draw and do this video at the same time. But you're getting my drift here. See lines like that? See the difference? See how the lines go like this here? And they're pushed up there? Okay, I'm going to look at those lines. And I'm going to make a mark where I see it growing up like that. And that's going to help me as well. Let me get rid of some of these stupid lines I made making a mess. See, I'm trying not to confuse you more. This is not that easy to understand. <laughs> it's easy and complicated. Because, <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing this, and then you turn it over, and you're done. You know, it gets confusing. Okay, so now I have made on this foot this line right here. Do you see that? From my measurement. Okay, now... I'm going to take my rasp here, and I'm going to begin rasping off. See, I would want to make a line also here and here, where I see the lines going up. And then I'm just going to start trying to level out and take some of this off here by going like this and coming around. Okay, so wish we could just take the soul out, go, hmm, I got an imbalance, and then carve this thing. Let's see. What I say? A centimeter? Let's mark mark it in here. Let me see. Oh, a little over a centimeter. Mark it in here so I can take it off. Obviously, we can't do this. This is just helping me. We're going to see how close I get to my line by those little measurements. See, a lot more of this needs to be done. Oh, I'm coming right to my other line of clay there. All 
All right, so let's see how close I get to my line. If I come in here, now, come in here. Okay, you see what I've done there? I got them dots in there for my centimeter. Okay, I'm going to come around. Just pretend I'm rasping, taking this off. Maybe I'll use a knife. See, and you rasp around like this. You blend it all in so that it's, you know, you'll see it's going to be a kind of a wedge shape. All right. How close did I come to my line? Pretty darn close there. See there? Look at that. That can cause you so much problems. It's not very much really, is it? But it's a lot in these feet. There. Now I would accept. I'd have to be looking because now I got kind of a, where is it? I would have a high heel now on this side that I would have to take down a little more, which now I can really tell when I looked at it. Anyway, you're getting a general idea. So I would come in here and from here, see, first of all, Let's set it down here. Well, I know something's wrong there because there is no arch in the hoof. Although sometimes when the heels are run forward and everything else, you're going to find an arch. But now I might need to come in here and take off a little more going back like this to get my heels even. Looking down, because I, I added to this wall over here as well. All right. Now, I have uniform wall length and sole thickness around the whole perimeter of the foot. Okay, so I'm going to show you. We're going to take this off. <laughs> Come on. There we go. See, perfect form fitted. That's what your capsule needs to be as well. Okay, let's see what this thing is shaped like when it's laying flat. Take part of this off. Pretty much like a spaceship. There you go. That is the shape of your foot. That's the front foot. It's like a flying saucer. Stealth. A stealth bomber. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna show you here with a little bit of clay how easy it what it looks like here. In the next video, I'm going to build a wall here so you can see how easy it is to start getting these pillars high if you rasp a certain way. Okay? All right.